So why did you leave Stryker? That is probably the second most asked question that I get in regards to my background. It's never, why did you leave Cintas? Why did you leave Olympus? It's always, why did you leave Stryker? So why not jump into this video, answer that question, give you guys my top three reasons as to why I shifted careers, and hopefully give you guys a better understanding as to what options you might have when it comes to getting into this industry. So reason number one, I hope doesn't fall into like a controversial side for anybody. Um, I'm a millennial, but I don't want this to be looked at like millennialism or anything like that. This was more of kind of revelations and experiences that I went through that helped me make the decision that I ended up making, which was ultimately leaving Stryker. And the, the very first reason was something that I really did enjoy and love at the beginning, but it was after this that kind of really pushed me over the edge and reason one is in this industry which i'm sure plenty of you have heard from other people when you're trying to get in is it's almost like a doctor you need to marry your job and i always looked at that as kind of a badge of honor in itself like how amazing is that i want something that i can really just dive into and make it a part of myself and i didn't really understand what that truly meant until a little bit later and we'll get to that but reason number one for making me wanting to start looking around and go was the fact that everybody expected you to work non-stop and I'm completely fine with, you know, hard work. That, that, that doesn't bother me. But just the fact that they expected you day in and day out, from dawn until dusk, every single day to go out there and grind it out, that was, to me, just a little bit overboard. But it was the expectation, and everybody wore it like it was a badge of honor. Like, oh man, yeah, yesterday I worked 12 hours. Oh man, this morning I started, uh, my case was, you know, an hour and a half away. So I left the house at 4.30 so I could make sure that I was there on time for my 7 a.m. And then we had a dinner and I didn't get home until 10 p.m. Man, that, that was an awesome day. Worked real hard. And I did that. It was fun for a little while. It was pretty cool, you know, to wake up and to know that you were going to go be covering cases, helping doctors, and then at the end of the day, maybe you had a dinner that you were going to be attending with one of those doctors. And that was fun. I was young. It was exciting to think that this was kind of my life. But then reason number two was my life happened. And my wife had our firstborn, a daughter. And she was born on a Thursday. And I was really excited. It was so surreal for me to become a father. And, you know, Stryker actually sent me a gift. It was really cool. But she was born, like I said, on a Thursday. And that coming Monday, my team was expecting me to start covering cases. And I did. And that was, I guess, a, a failure on my part because Stryker does offer. 30 days of paternity. So I don't want to say that Stryker as an organization didn't care about me, but I just felt that those 30 days were something that was unattainable to grasp when you're in my field and in my career. Maybe it works for somebody in the corporate office, but it definitely didn't work for me. And my team and the people around me and the organization on the sales side didn't make that seem like it was something that I was going to be able to use. So I didn't take those 30 days. I went right back to working that following Monday. So my daughter was born on a Thursday and I was back to work on Monday. And some older people watching this are probably like, oh, quit being a little pussy, you pansy. Like, that's what it is. That's what you should be doing. And, and you know what? Like, I believed it too. And uh, it sucks that I believe that. I, I take that as a failure on my part for not choosing my family and spending time with my newborn. Um, and just looking at the stigma of, I need to get out there, go work as many hours as I can and bring home that bacon, right? But that brings me to issue, you know, number two, I guess B, I think we're still on two, maybe we went to one. So one was, you know, extremely having to just devote your entire life to this role. That's what's expected of you and you're wearing it like a badge of honor. Reason number two for me wanting to go was the fact that we had our daughter 
and I didn't get to really be at home and spend time with my family and bond with my child. And like I just said, bringing home the bacon, right? That's what that's what men need to do. We need to go out there and go bring home the bacon. But shit, I wasn't bringing home bacon. I was bringing home like, I, I don't know, uh, table scraps or something because as you guys saw in my last video uh, about my pay, as a uh, full line rep hitting quota, not even breaking $90,000. So I took a pay cut to come here and I was just a cog in a wheel. And I definitely felt that way at this point because I was expected not to take my paternity, but to be that cog in a wheel and continue to keep making that wheel turn. And for what? For that? I knew I was worth more than that. So that was reason number two was you as an organization have an endless amount of people that want to work here. So I knew that I was replaceable and it didn't matter if I wanted to leave the next day. They would have me replaced within a couple of weeks because that's all you have to do is just look at that huge stack of resumes. And I don't want to say that nobody makes money in this organization. There are plenty of people, and I want to say less now because they're getting pushed out, but there are people that are making a, a really good living. My senior partner was one of them but I wasn't. So it didn't help having a kid and not really getting the time to go spend with my family and not really making that much money. All of that just didn't make sense to me. And that was another reason as to why I wanted to go. I looked at getting into striker as joining the big leagues, right? So you've got the NFL and you have the CFL. And I was expecting the NFL. I was expecting so much money, like life-changing money. And I was getting paid like I made the CFL. So what did I do? I put my resume out there, talked to a couple of recruiters, and almost immediately found a job that almost doubled what I made at Stryker. I said I almost made 90. That, that was wrong. I think I barely broke 80. So here I am looking at this $80,000 a year NFL opportunity, getting paid like I was in the CFL, and there was better options out there for me. So I chose reason number three, which was providing a better life for my family by doubling my income. And I say that because I was talking with my mentor the other day and they asked me a simple question that I really had to like break down into, into time to really understand it. And let me break that down for you guys and see which one you would want to pick. And, and I want you to try to make that decision before I get to the end of it to see if you would make the right decision. And they asked me, would I take a job that paid $540,000 a year? 540, okay? That's over a half a mil a year, but I had to devote 100 hours a week of my life, every single week, 52 weeks a year. Or would I take $104,000 a year job only having to commit 20 hours a week if somebody out there is really good at math you probably ran the numbers really quickly and realized both scenarios in the amount of hours you're making a hundred dollars an hour but your time is relevant at this point right so you're either working a hundred hours a week over here making half a mil or only 20 hours a week over here making a hundred to me that's a no-brainer i'm taking the hundred because I can figure out something else to do with those other 20 hours of the quote unquote 40 hour work week and go make some more money and probably really enjoy that other piece, which is this, just talking to you guys, hanging out, making some content and hoping to, you know, give you guys some good information that I didn't necessarily have when I was trying to make these choices. So those are the three reasons why I decided to leave Stryker and go make more money somewhere else. It was, if I'm going to be a cog in a wheel, because I am still working in the system, I am now working for another large company, I am just a cog in their wheel, but their wheel is real nice, okay? It's like a Rolls Royce wheel compared to, I don't wanna downplay the other wheel, so let's just call it a, a Mercedes, okay? Mercedes to Rolls Royce. And I'll be a cog in that wheel, right? Because in this wheel, we had our second child, and they gave me 13 weeks of paternity. And my manager insisted I take that time, that that is time that the company gives you. You should take it. Whereas in this other place, it was frowned upon if I wanted to go take it by my manager and other people around me. So I didn't take it. And this time around, I took it 
and I get to go spend time with my family and I get to still have the energy at the end of a work day to create a video like this, that to me is way more valuable than just being a cog in a wheel somewhere else and saying that I get to work at one of the greatest companies in the world that everybody talks about, but I don't get paid like I feel I work at the greatest company in the world. So take that for what it is, but that is the reason why I quit working at Stryker. Hopefully, if you guys keep asking me that question, I can just revert you over to this video, but if not, and you're still trying to get into Stryker or other medical device videos, you should go watch that video.